This time on Flipping Bangers, we get to grips with an off-road bargain. I love the buzz of a cheap, cheap car. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Hooray! <laughs> with jobs that even fools like us can tackle. It's quite pleasing, isn't it? But maybe fools like us should know. Ah, that could be a problem. It's horrible. Cheap does not always equal good. There's work to do all over this car, isn't there? We've said goodbye to our day jobs and invested our own hard-earned cash as we try and make it in the cutthroat world of second-hand cars. You've got to buy well, but you've got to sell well. We have a goal. We need to double our money. If we put 500 quid in, we need to see a £1,000 back. But we're forced to the very bottom of the market. We buy cars that nobody else wants. Who else will buy that car? <laughs> Can we keep our business afloat, flipping bangers? There's so many things to do to this car. We've turned our backs on our regular jobs and attempted to carve out a new living by buying and selling cheap cars. Evicted from our previous workshop by angry neighbours, Will has sorted us out with a new base, and apart from having no working toilet, it feels like home. We've raided our bank accounts, and this time we have enough to invest around 500 to 1,500 pounds on each car. What next? Ah, yes, a car. I'm thinking... If we want to make any money at the moment, we could start to have a look at things like 4x4s or SUVs. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Everyone drives them, don't they? Mm. I think if you're thinking of a timeless 4x4, it'd have to be a Defender, wouldn't it? Of course. <laughs> but, I mean, actually, if you think about it, anything from 83 to present day, it doesn't really matter how old they are, all really expensive. Yeah. Well, there are other options. I mean, maybe we could look at Range Rovers. Yeah, if you want that badge. But then again, they're also massively expensive, really expensive to fix, and I think probably go wrong quite a lot. Yeah, I have heard that. <laughs> OK, well, you know I have a certain portion for early discoveries, don't really? you? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bizarrely, they are the only Land Rover product that aren't going through the roof price-wise at the moment, even ones that haven't been driven a million miles by you. Which is amazing, isn't it? Because they are really good cars. But do you really want another one in the yard? I know what would happen. If you had one in the yard, you would pick it clean for bits for yours. <laughs> and that's not a lie. You can't even deny that, can you? <laughs> yeah, I probably would, yeah. <laughs> um, OK, then, maybe... Freelander. Yeah, I don't know much about them. I know the later one's massively popular. You mm. see them about everywhere, don't you? Early Freelanders. They're very good cars. I know they get slated a lot, but in my experience, they're very good, very reliable and long-lasting. Good little trucks. OK, so you want to have a look then, shall we have I a look? I do think we should have a look, yes. OK. So I've been looking at Freelanders. Yes, good. Um, Three-door Freelanders, yeah. which are nice. I mean, they're, they are pretty much a sort of lifestyle-based car. Yes. As you can imagine. But this one's petrol, which is good, because there's high demand from petrol. Why are you laughing at me I'm so much? I'm just laughing. You're saying it's a lifestyle-style <laughs> car. You've clearly looked at something on the internet because it's got nothing to do with your or my lifestyle. So that's <laughs> what it said on the advert. <laughs> Freelander market is quite big, so I've been looking pretty close to the bottom. Hey. And right. then I decided to look right at the very, very bottom. Hooray! <laughs> I know. <laughs> but they're quite affordable, so I thought, you know, let's, let's just go for it. And it is, it's, it's got to be cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. I can see exactly what's happening here. You're, you're, you're taking us to the first wreck that you found in a field, and you're trying to dress it up like we've won the lottery. <laughs> hey, lucky us. I know, and it is almost as good as that. <laughs> so it's a bright orange. Of course three it is. Three-door Freelander, which used to be a nice little runner. Used to be. Yeah, and then it failed. It's MOT. Of course it I is. mean, say hideously would be well, a fair way of putting it, I suppose. <laughs> so, so we're going to see a car that looks interesting, yeah. but has absolutely nothing else going for it. The Freelander owner is heading abroad. Sold the car at auction, but the buyer didn't show. So we get first look. All good, except for it's all the way down in Cornwall. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, we've come to look at a Freelander. Is it the right place? Yes, it is, yeah. Through the gate there, on the left. Keys are in it, help yourselves, have a look, and then give us a show when you're ready. Amazing view. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, really Dartmoor. beautiful. Ah, 
Oh, is it? Thank you. No Cheers. worries. See you shortly. Cheers. I didn't tell Gus the selling price was three fifty. I mean, how bad can it be? It's better than you said. Yeah, it's great. Um, do you like the colour? No. Oh, come on, it's brilliant. It's horrible. <laughs> I love that colour. These need a lot of work, don't they? And I've got a very good trick for that, although there is a lot of it. That's going to need a whole load of loving. This tyre's knackered. Yeah, this one's knackered as well. Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't notice in the advert. What's that? It's actually the E. S model. You don't know what that is, do you? No. <laughs> I, don't. I don't know what it is. <laughs> We've got a bit of grot around this. It looks like the uh, uh, the rubber's yeah. eroded away. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? But it's stainless, isn't it? So it's not going to rust, is it? No, it should be OK. A couple of dings up here. And look, oh, crikey, it's from here all the way through the whole lot. Yeah, I think that's hit a gatepost or something. Yeah. It's funny, when these came out, they were so proud about this detachable back bit here. They, it was almost as if the design team had snuck something through in production, you know, something from a concept car, because it was so space age. The other thing they were massively proud of is the fact that this window used to drop down. Oh, it still drops down. Yeah, this, it's a weird mechanism, isn't it? It sort of folds out and takes off. It's funny, isn't it? Because everything does that now, doesn't it? I think it was the first. They were trailblazers. Yeah. Well, I think that's all right. It looks all right, actually, doesn't it? Well, no, not really. Not from what I'm seeing. Oh, OK. Well, this seat's all right. This has got some pretty big holes in it, and that one's going to be quite tricky to fix right there. This is a shame, isn't it? Yeah, that is a pity. The it's all pretty it. grotty. It's a bit dirty and, yeah, I don't know, really. I mean, look, it's done 127,000 miles. I think it's going to be, a, yeah, kind of a bit of tear in it here and there. It just needs a clean-up in it, really, won't that yeah, be Yeah, I, I think it'll be all right. Should we have a little listen to the engine? Oh, it's got a hole in the exhaust. <laughs> it certainly has, yeah. <laughs> It is actually in there. It's just a long way down, it's isn't it? A really tiny little thing. It sounds all right, doesn't it? It does. There's no nasty yeah. knots or rattles or anything. There's a bit of smoke it? coming out of there. I think that's just a bit of oil dripping on it from somewhere. It can't be that bad. There's quite a lot of oil, actually, around it. Uh, and there's no fluid in it. The old gaffer tape issue. Not a good look. It looks a bit unloved, actually, I have to say. Yeah, OK, so it could do with a bit of TLC. What always gets me about these things, these Freelanders, is, like, it's this engine, the K-series engine. They were normally used in things like the MGF, the Lotus Elise. They were lightweight sports cars, weren't they? Are you saying that this might be a little bit underwhelming? I think it might be dreadfully disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think this, this is closer to a scrapyard than we think, isn't it? No, I don't think so. I think we need to give it a chance. I think we'll take it for a drive. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to grab some coolant. See you back here in a moment, yeah? All right. While the coolant is topped up, we reflect on the fact that the Freelander failed the MOT on multiple issues. So aside from whatever they are, we've got a mucky, dented car with a noisy exhaust and bad tyres. But it drives. This car is a clever thing. A four-wheel drive, lightweight car. Freelanders, I don't know if you know this... I know. ...actually incredibly good off-road. At least they would be if the actual four-wheel drive system <laughs> was connected, yeah. which I didn't tell you about before. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it does say in the advert that the um, viscous coupling has got in the uh, centre bomb shaft, so it's been taken off. So it's not a clever four-wheel drive car, no, is it? it's not. <laughs> no, it's half clever two-wheel drive car. The one thing that I do remember about them is that, that yellow button, um, and they were very proud of that as well, and that was the hill descent. It's electronic hill descent. And I think Ooh. it's interesting because, actually, it, it's an answer to a question that was never asked, because. Actually, if you were going downhill, you'd just go in a low gear, wouldn't you? But it does show you who they were trying to sell these cars to. It wasn't enthusiasts, was it? It was just, it was just general public, people who wanted to feel like they could have a bit of off-road and they could have hill descent at the touch of a button, huh? Brilliant, yeah. Amazing. So very, very refined. But I can tell you, with the lack of four-wheel drive on this car... Or traction. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm not going to be looking for any hills to try out the descent control on. No, I suppose it won't work, will it, if only no, two wheels No, because we'll end up sliding down the whole thing and wrapping this around some old oak tree. <laughs> I don't know, I suspect that it had an uneconomical repair, like you say, this was coupling or, or whatever it was, and it's just been left and here we are with it now, and we have to work out whether we want it or not, don't we? Well, do we want it? I mean, I'm quite attracted to her personally. I know you are. I know. <laughs> That's just the colour. It is the colour, yeah. 
Well, I don't know. I, I still think it's down to money. Yeah. Really. <laughs> you can't go to Cornwall without having a pasty, can you? No, you can't. You can't. Definitely not. Hi, Eddie. Oh, you all right, guys? Yeah, good. Well, that was fun. For you. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I know. Enjoyed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all right. We were giving it a good old drive around, and, uh, yeah, I think we're interested, aren't we? Yeah, definitely, I yeah. I, think... I know you've had a bit of trouble already, haven't you? We did. We put it online, and the sale was stopped because they believed that the people that were buying it were scammers. Oh, right. And then we had a phone call from you guys. And we're not scammers, are we? No, we and are not. You're not scammers, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this must put us in a pretty good position for getting a good deal out of you. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, with the amount that's wrong with it, I mean, it's really not worth 300. I mean, I think probably 200 for us. It's got no MOT. It's got a lot of stuff wrong with it. We have got a lot of things to do on it. But it's a lovely colour. He's playing, he knows. <laughs> you, you can tell I'm ginger, can't you? <laughs> See, perfect match for the car. Yeah. How about we meet at 250? Personally, I think 250 is about right for it. OK, save me the hassle of getting a load of grief off Goss on the way home. 250, I'm happy with that. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Fantastic. Okay. These probably cost over 25 grand when new. Can we really have just bought one for 1% of that figure? I love it. I love the buzz of a cheap, cheap car, and I'm never going to get over it. And it starts in my head, and it works its way down and comes out of my toes. <laughs> in Europe, when they were released, they were the most popular 4x4 for five years. We got one on the trailer. It works. And we bought it for less than the price of a radio. That's the sort of deal I like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, when you say it works, it, it... Some of it works, <laughs> but I think you're right. I think yeah. maybe we've fallen on our feet with this car. If we can help it up off its knees, get it back on the road, we could make some money out of that car. And I think we're on a bit of a roll. I'm liking your enthusiasm. But for us and the car, there's a fair way to go. The next day, we look over our new purchase and formulate a plan. Right, so what do we got? Well, we have a very cheap car with a lot of mechanical issues, and we're going to have to work very, very hard on those if we're going to achieve the money that we're chasing on this car. OK, I think we need to have a team talk, because we have a 4x4, which actually isn't a 4x4, is it? I can't help but think it would be better to sell a 4x4 as a 4x4, wouldn't it? Because there's not many of this age that are 4x4s anymore, is there? No. So we need to definitely do that. We do, and there's also the exhaust system, obviously. Yeah. And there does seem to be some noise coming from the suspension as well. Some noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's really clattery. It only seems to be on this corner, though. In actual fact, there's, there's, there's work to do all over this car, isn't there? Well, what do you think to the look of the car, then? Uh, obviously, there's dents at the same height either side, isn't there? Yeah. Um, the bumpers, we can sort those out, can't we? That's no problem. But I do think you're right. I think mechanically, is, is, that's where we need to, uh, to put all our effort, because if we do that, then it's worth doing the seat and it's worth doing the bumpers. But if you can't do the mechanics on it, then there's little point in doing the bumper or the seats, is there? Colour's growing on me, though. It's nice, isn't it? I do like it. I would say it was a lovely shade of ginger. I think it's called Kimver Sand. You've looked that up, haven't you? No, it's where my father-in-law came from, Kimver. Oh, is it? Yeah. And let me guess, the sands are red. Yeah, they are, yeah. <laughs> I've been the photographer a lot lately. Maybe I'm doing a good job. Who knows? And the car looks pretty good. You can't see any of its faults. Advert for the Freelander. Well, it's quite good so far because I've got a really nice selection of pictures for the car. It's in a fantastic colour. We'll have done all the work on it, so the four-wheel drive system, that'll all be refurbished and working. It's going to have a new MOT on it, all of those suspension issues and exhaust system problems. They're all done. So we've got a car that looks good, um, drive well. It's... The funny thing is, it's difficult to sort of price a car like this, so I, I'm sort of really struggling with it a bit. Struggling with what? I'm thinking about the price on the Freelander. Mm. So, I mean, it's a tight market, isn't it? There's, there's quite a lot of them out there. You know, they're, they're quite old cars now. What did we buy it for? 250 quid? We did, yeah, so it's yeah. a very cheap car. Yeah. I, I was thinking about 1,500. 15. I wasn't thinking quite... I was thinking more like a grand, to be honest. Mm. Should we go somewhere in the middle? Yeah. 12.50? Yeah. 12.50, and let's say first person to view will be compelled to buy this car. 
Blimey, only 12.50. Maybe I'll buy it myself. The one thing we both agree on is we need to get the Freelander mechanically straight as a priority. We need to get eyes on that 4x4 system that's missing that prop shaft. Oh. Oh. Right, let's have a look then. I know, you know what? It's much better down here than... I know it's covered in cow muck, but it's actually... <laughs> That's your fault. <laughs> but it's better than I thought it was. It's not rusty. No. I mean, there's a very large large piece that should be here that's missing, which is a bit sad. I guess it goes to a garage, they take it off, they chuck yeah, it away, it's the way it is. I mean, luckily, we will be plundering the wealth of freelanders that there are in scrapyards, won't we? Well, yeah, they do all suffer with a similar problem, though, so there might be a lot with that bit missing already. Actually, that's a really good point. Yeah. Well, OK, well, that could be a problem. Yeah. We know about this, don't we? Well, we do, and we found out exactly oh. where it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually been completely detached. <laughs> right, OK, well, we know how to fix that, then. We need a new piece of exhaust system from here yeah, it's a one... to far, far over there. That's one piece all the way down. Yeah, it's a mega exhaust, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's see yeah. if we can find it, shall we? That's the thing. That's the thing to do. Yep, defo. So we need to find a used prop shaft, find an exhaust, take off the old one. Remarkably, this exhaust pipe has two bolts here and the rest of it is only held on by rubbers, so it's actually quite wobbly. It's not supposed to be quite that wobbly because actually this bit moves independently of this bit where it's broken here, which is why it was making so much noise. So I'm going to take this off uh, and find another exhaust pipe. But I have learnt from taking off lots of very, very rusty nuts that when you just undo them, they tend to break. But if you clean the threads up then you can get past the really rusty bit here and you've got a chance of not breaking them. See, I was waiting for it to break too, but it didn't, did it? <laughs> and now, just the rubbers to go. Ah, there's a... Another problem with the exhaust pipe, just there. <laughs> Something extremely exhausting about doing things upside down. I can't get this apart, because it's rusted together, of course. And my health and safety has said, says I shouldn't be grinding it off with the neoprene petrol tank just there, so I've gone for the manual option. <laughs> So, after a slightly inelegant removal of the exhaust, we have to wait for some new parts. So I may as well look at these seats. This poor seat here is showing signs of extreme wear and tear. The seam is split here, the seam is also split here, and this cheek is quite worn as well. I'm going to give it the TLC that it needs. In order to do that, it has got to come out first. It may seem a bit pointless fixing the seats now, but it's all about improving what we call buyer's expectations. So, I take everything out that needs a bit of TLC. Oh, are you going to clean that? I was hoping to put it on my tomorrow's to-do list. Come on, then, let's go on. Yeah, good plan. So that's an OK day. We've seen the worst of the Freelander, and it's not half bad. Day two on the faded Freelander. We only paid 250 quid for it, and we're hoping to add a grand onto that. We both have things to bring to our party. Ooh. Mmm. Anti roll bar drop link mounts. One for the side that you're on over there which is the rattly one, mm -hmm. sorts out that problem. Yes. Second one, precautionary measure to make sure they're both done and everything's as good as it can be at the front of the car. And they'll look very shiny, won't they? They will do, yeah. And, um, well, I've got a new exhaust pipe, so I might crack on and put that on, although I suspect it might sound better without it. Oh, yeah. But I'd better put it on. Drop links can really transform the way your car sounds when it goes over a bump. 
This drop link connects the suspension to the anti-roll bar. The anti-roll bar links the suspension on this side of the car to the other side of the car. So when you're doing some hard cornering, for instance, it keeps compliance and balance between the suspension on both sides of the car, stops the body from rolling too much. And when these ball joints and each end of these are worn out, which they do on a regular basis, these little links rattle like crazy and make a tremendous noise and affect the capability of the roll bar as well. That's why we're changing them. And you can do this as well. Effectively, they just bolt on, but please be aware, sometimes they're a bit rusty. Penetrating fluid is always a big help. I always find it very, very pleasant when I take something off like this to find that the previous fitter of said components has put a little bit of copper slip on all the threads. It makes it so much easier when you come back to change it in the future. And for an amazingly cheap car, an incredibly cheap job at 25 quid the pair. Gas is still on the exhaust. Well, actually, I was quite proud of the fact that I didn't have to cut these off because normally everything I touch breaks, but I'm going to treat the exhaust pipe to a new set of nuts and bolts, only because I can. I've got a set in here which will do the job. Right, so, first off, there's an interesting little twist to get this up and over the subframe at the back, which is there. It's quite tight, actually. Uh. Aha! It's in. Then that joins up on there with that gasket. But this is a pattern pipe. So it's not an original manufacturer one. So I'm going to put a little bit of, just a little bit of uh, sealant on here, just in case it's not fantastically uh, flush. Again, we're counting the pennies. The exhaust was only 78 pounds. A Land Rover part might be higher quality, but we can't justify the higher cost. When you're doing a flange up like this, you've got to do it equally. You can't do one side, you can't tighten one side right up and leave the other side loose, because otherwise you're going to bend the flange and you won't get a proper gas-tight seal. So you've got, to, you've got to walk them in together. Little bit this one, little bit this one, little bit this one, little bit this one. And the back box comes with a kit as well. Well, the engine on our car is definitely not looking at its best. And if we want to sell our car for top money, which is what we do want to do, then we've got to sort these problems. And the problem is, is the rocker cover gasket is actually leaking oil all the way down the front of the engine, covering the alternator in oil, dripping down onto the exhaust manifold, so then it smokes and looks awful. Thankfully, it's quite a simple fix. I just changed the gasket. But there are little telltale signs that you can see when you take it to bits. For instance, along this front edge, where it's supposed to be making a perfect oil tight seal, you can see where it's not making the seal. Of course, there is oil spewing out all over the place, but the telltale sign is on the surface of the gasket as well. I have a new gasket, but before I fit that, I need to clean everything up. I remove the old tin rock cover gasket and clear away any debris on the edges. It is essential to get all of the mating surfaces where the gasket goes together 
super clean. When there's old silicon-based gasket sealant all over the place, I find it's best to scrape it off with a, with a, um, with a sharp blade and also be aware that you're not going to let any of those bits drop in the engine. You don't want all those old bits of gasket sealer floating around in the, inside the engine, clogging up filters, and then eventually, in worst case scenario, oil ways as well. These K-series engines use what I call a crush gasket, so it's a tin plate which has been shaped. As it's clamped together between the two components, that crush gets formed flat and it makes a really good seal. Personally, I don't always trust them that much, and I know these K-series engines have got a habit of leaking quite a bit as well. So, I've used a nice high-quality sealer, got it on both sides of the, the components that are going to bolt together either side of this gasket to give it the best chance that we can. That is it, job done. Our engine should no longer be spewing oil out all over itself, which means it's going to present well and it's not going to create a nasty smoke every time oil drips on the exhaust pipe. It's cost me a couple of quid in parts, not very much in time, and it's going to really improve the saleability of our car. Surely something is wrong. How can this car be so easy through the workshop? Oh, that's right, because so far we've only really scratched the surface. One of the most unattractive aspects of the Freelander is the pair of dents on the side, which look unfixable. So we've got an expert in to help us out. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, you must be Paul, then. I am. How are we doing? Wicked. I'm Will. Thank nice you very much. Nice yeah, to good, you. thank you. Uh, wow, you found the car, then? It's, it's not too bad. I mean, it's obviously taken quite a whack. It's repairable. I've done a lot worse in my time. Well, I think the best thing for me to do is not slow you down by hanging over your shoulder and watching you what, do what you do and asking zillions of questions. I can kind of leave you to it and see you shortly, we'll yeah? Back on, yeah. Should be good as new. Awesome. See you in a bit. Paul masks up the Freelander. Grinds down the dent to bare metal. on a lug and uses a slide hammer to gently pull it out. to bring it back to a decent surface. That's where the art is. That's amazing, isn't it? We're getting there, we're getting yeah. there. I mean, I've been trying to keep out of your way, as I said I would, but I've been keeping a bit of a spy on what you've been doing. I love that. Electric slide brother. hammer. It does yeah. its job, it does its job. I mean, I have a feel. I mean, you can see the dents. Oh, nearly right. there. It's nearly there. Yeah. Then it's a final fill. 
And if you want to learn how to use filler, then just watch this chap go. Paul flats it all down perfectly. A good layer of decent primer. Another masterclass in delicate application. A bit of accelerator drying. You get the idea. It's very process heavy, but every single process is incredibly important. We're getting close now. Final round of masking. And paint. Blended as far as the door. This is amazing for a mobile service, and it's only cost us 300 quid. Whoa. All done. Wow, eh? Do you know? That looks absolutely amazing, but it does mean that I've got a massive bone to pick with you. What's that? Now I'm going to have to polish the rest of the car and try and match <laughs> this standard, which I'm... Well, <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to be blooming hard work, isn't it? Like I said, I was going to try, and uh, yeah, there you go. There's the end result. That's brilliant, thank you. While Will watches someone else do the hard work, I'm popping out. One part we still need is that prop shaft. Our local breaker will have the cars, but will the props already have been taken off, as it's such a common fault? Free landing number one, no prop shaft. There's two more this way. Number two, no prop shaft, another one this way. Yes, third car and there's a whole prop shaft, so it's coming home with me, I've got to get a jack. It's 50 quid, that's fine. That's amazing. So there's four freelanders in this uh, in this yard, and only one of them has got prop shaft. So I managed to jack it up. I managed to scrabble around underneath it, and I managed to get it out. It's day four, and we've got five to sort out our freelander that is literally rough around the edges. Our biggest job is to replace the missing prop shaft. So most freelanders of this age are two-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive, because the four-wheel drive system has a tendency to break. The viscous coupler here seizes up, they stop working, and instead of replacing them, which is expensive, people just take them off, throw them away, and just run it as a two-wheel drive car. But there's plenty of these cars in scrapyards at the moment, so if you can find one that's had some other sort of damage done to it and it's still got its prop shaft intact, then you can take them off. So I'm going to change the bearings on here and put it back in the car. But the system itself is worth talking about because it's actually a clever system. If the front wheels start spinning, uh, you know, if you're in a field and you're, and, you're, and you're on mud or whatever, this viscous coupler starts heating up, and as it heats up, it starts to grip, and then it starts spinning through the sort of shock absorber here, the, the, the rear prop, and therefore starts to rotate the rear wheels and help the car on its way forward. So it's a clever system. But it's the viscous coupler that seizes, and when it seizes, it smashes the gears in the gearbox that turn the drive 90 degrees to head down towards the, the rear wheels. So that's the basis of it. I'm going to sort it out, put it back on the car. You'd think this would just be a reversal of the removal, but when you haven't removed it in the first place, somehow it's more difficult. The way this came off is I took this coupler off first. This is the coupler that goes onto the gearbox. So I took that off first. So... That's going back on first. That's a bit tricky. Is 
the wheels are off the ground, I'm actually able to turn it round and get to the other side, which is great. The prop is in two bits, and now I've swapped the bearings, the rear section bolts onto the shaft. So, to the cosmetics. This poor seat really has seen some hard times. I mean, just look at these splits here and here. But it's not the end of the line for this seat. I could probably fix that. I'm going to give it a go, see how we get on. But it's not that good for the back of the seat, is it? Because the actual leather has worn away on this corner here. And no amount of trying to stitch that back together will really work. So that is in a very, very poor shape. However, I have been a clever chap and I have been internet shopping, look. It doesn't have the hole for the widget that makes the seat go backwards and forwards, nor does it have the hole for the lumbar adjusting thing either. Now, from what I can make out with these seats, they come apart quite easily. As you can see, this one's coming apart already on its own. This is all bust, so I might have to fix that in some sort of way. They've just got really natty little plastic edges that just hook over the edge. Here we are, so... Just got to peel one edge away, get it going. There was me thinking it was going to be a piece of cake. And it's... Oh, it's totally not. It's quite tricky. There we are. These ones got little, little pegs that pass through an expanding end on the other side. So you've got to push them through. Sometimes they go through one way, sometimes they go through the other way. That's the little pin. And now the little collet, which has been expanded by the pin in it, is now reduced. So this should now come off like that. Just going to get this one to the last bit of thread just holding it on there. Then nip round to the other side of it, undo the bolt in the other side, get that all ready so that I've got the smallest amount of time with the whole thing just holding on one hinge. Don't want to do any damage to the mechanism of the seat because that's just going to make more work for me. I managed to strip the base away and then I can hopefully re-stitch the lower units. Finally free, I think. Now the bit we can start looking at the seam, seeing how stitchable that is going to be. I could run the seam through the sewing machine, but if I miss the old holes, it's not a good job. So this is a hand stitch. There we go. Centre seam is done. On to the next one, one on the side. And on this seam, I can use the machine. Makes my job a bit quicker.
So that's all looking really lovely. It's just the back of the seat to do now. Shouldn't take me too long. Not a bad day. We've broken the back of the Freelander. Day five. The Freelander project, unusually for us, has gone pretty well. We've done the mechanicals and some of the cosmetics. Early bath? No. The job list is still long. Do you know what day it is today? I, yeah, I know. It's the last day on this car and there is an awful lot to do. Big day for the Freelander. Yeah, it is. A clean is on the list and I volunteer for it. It's the first time for everything, you know. We both scrub away and the years are rolled back. So I have had a bit of a thought for our planning, Gus. What's that? Well, maybe we should clean it before we put it in the workshop and uh, take the wheels off. It might help. Yeah. Our Freelander is quite bumper heavy, isn't it? It relies on the bumpers as a part of its styling. And UV damage means that it's all lost its colour. And there's a couple of ways that I know of bringing it back. And the first way would be using a petroleum jelly which I've used for forever on bumpers, actually. And it does a really, really nice job. Obviously, it'll come off eventually, but if you wash your car with normal soap and water, it's not going to come off just with that. So that's the first way, which works really nicely, if you can be bothered. The second way is with, with a heat gun. So the Vaseline is replacing an oil onto the top to take it back to the true colour. But with a heat gun, you're drawing the oils out, so it's more permanent. But you've got to be careful because the wings on this car are plastic and I suspect that plastic is thinner than that plastic. So you see what I'm saying, you could go through that. You can damage the lights, you have to be careful. You can even burn the plastic if you're not careful. But we are careful and with gentle strokes, we bring the as new look back to the Land Rover with our 20 pound heat gun. Like I said, it's a lot of bumper, isn't it? Even the wheels get a proper once-over and some new tyres. I can't help myself. And that, my friends, is a £250 Land Rover. Well, it's not £250 anymore. We paid £359 on assorted parts, £300 on dent removal, so it's now £909. Still cracking value. Could you just remind me how old this car is? Ah, well, yeah, I, I could, but I've got to rely on my numerical and memory skills. Oh, dear. But based on those, <laughs> not being brilliant, I could say this car is 18 years old, which means it's not the oldest car that we've ever done. No, it's about average age, isn't it? Hmm. I've, um, I've never particularly liked the design of this car, but... I think it really stands the test of time, doesn't it? It really works well now, and I have read that these cars are on the up. 
Well, that is really good news because, again, relying on my memory and my mathematics, I'm pretty certain that we paid 200... <laughs> Oh, 250 quid for this car. Yeah. Which is amazing, isn't it? You get an awful lot of car for 250 quid. Are mm. you suggesting that we have an eye for design and a nose for a bargain and that our business is going in the right direction? We might be able to pat ourselves on the back and think that our business is actually on course. Are you now regretting standing there, not here, because I'm clearly going to get to the driver's seat before you? I've already covered myself for that one, you and the, the door keys, is locked you? and I have the key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't do it anyway. <laughs> we head for a track not far from the workshop to see if the Freelander can still cut it. When Land Rover developed this, they weren't thinking of a replacement for the Defender, were they, at all, right, in any right, shape right, or form? Right. But it's still got that Land rover -y thing going on, hasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good, actually. I mean, it's fair to say this is more of a soft roader than, than a proper off-roader. And if you were a shepherd with goats and sheep and string in the back, then, you know, you'd be more in need of the heroic defender, I would have said. I think we should make up a little scenario, right? So we're going to the supermarket and we're going to buy some, well, some biscuits. Yeah. And the road's blocked on the way home, so we've had to go off-road. And here we are. Yeah, well, it's more than capable of handling this sort of stuff. It's got a Gucci little 4x4 self-control system viscous coupling, it's got electronic hill descent for when the going gets tough, going down hills. You know, it's a good little car, very capable little car. I think, oh, as a word of warning, if we hear any nasty, graunchy noises, uh -huh. we should definitely, definitely stop, because we're only really here to make sure it all works, aren't we? We are, yeah. I don't want this to be a very expensive day out. Really. But it is kind of nice to know that our whizzy little 1800 engine that's sitting in front of us at the moment it's very capable of pulling along this very lightweight, nimble 4x4. I think we should try and enjoy ourselves, and we should definitely try and get it dusty. Oh, I think we're going to be able to work very well at that. It's going to be uh, dust-tastic the whole way. The Freelander performs so well and looks so good, we upped the price to £2,000, but the calls don't exactly tumble in. So have you had any meaningful contact about this car? <laughs> <laughs> we have had a couple of people paying compliments to us online. Well, that's nice. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Amazing. A couple of my mates are interested. Oh, dear. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're my mates. They don't want to pay what we want for the car. So I think maybe what we should do is relist it, but relist it as an auction and just see what happens. Isn't that going to take a really long time to sell, though? Well, I don't see why it should take any longer. We, we've, it's got to go because we need another car, don't we? So yeah. we put it on as an auction and we let the market dictate what we get for it. Yeah, I suppose so. Seven days later, the price reaches £1,650. Let's just hope the buyer turns up. 